390 Wagon Master here. We're working on the Pride DB20. Uh, pretty much just wrapping it up. Next uh, part of this process will be to uh, detail it. This in the lid. But uh, I just want to show you what I did and the results that I got. So I changed out I changed out this filter. There we are. This filter cap here. Another cap down below. Put some good quality caps in there. Um, had to rework the uh, relay because the relay was sticking and was actually nulling things out. So you would turn the preamp on and signals would actually be lower. And you would cycle this a few times or tap it just right. It would, uh, you would get preamp and it would work until you keyed up again. Had to fix that. Caps. That's really all we need to do. There's no upgrades that need to be done. This thing works great. Um, and that relay, let me turn this radio off. And um, so first, uh, you got to take off that uh, the cover of the relay. You got to be careful. You always pitch them from front to back, not side to side. And they just and they come off. This board had to be loosened up. This is live. I guess I should probably unplug it. But um, anyway, you got to peel this back, move the fuse holder back. And you can wiggle that cap out pretty easily after that. But uh, yeah, everything was good. I went around the back side, uh, checked for bad solder joints. Nothing, nothing. Man, what technology or what what construction, right? Even though this was built by the handicapped, you know, rumor has it when I was a kid, they were built by the blind. But it says here, assembled in Mexico. And then I looked on the back of the board and it's June 25th of 76. So pretty cool. I love the look of that, man. That is awesome. I've, <laughs> I love Pride, uh, the way the Pride units look. So anyway, we got that cracked open, cleaned it. I did the old uh, paper routine. This is kind of a thicker, heavier paper. Um, on this camera, it doesn't show up very well. However, there, it left some marks. Dirty. Still wasn't getting proper operation, so we had to whip out the big guns. Generally, I'll, generally I will use wet-dry uh, 3M sandpaper and um, I will like give it a couple sprigs of uh, CRC and then and then run it through the relay contacts I guess I shouldn't have done that because this did I wanted to show you the the gook that it got off of there anyway even on the back side so um, but anyway yeah she cleaned right up and doing it this way, if you're very careful, don't push on the contacts. Got to be very careful. These are 45-year-old relays, right? And you're not going to get a replacement. So uh, be careful. Don't 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 sand her down. This works flawless. I'm thinking possibly of just upgrading the cord, uh, but that's about it. Uh, I'm going to leave the incandescence in. So let's do a few key ups here. Let's go to AM here. Okay. And I love it. So we're going to key it up. Is that not cool or what? I get out the old trusty uh, Dollar Tree Awesome Citrus Cleaner. It's a dollar a bottle uh, or maybe a dollar and a quarter now, but it's citrus cleaner. And what I'd like to do is I take and um, of course it's off the, the piece, of course. I take and I spray it down really good. And I let it percutute. I, I just let that awesome cleaner sit on there for maybe a minute or two. Um, sometimes I'll hold it flat and then I'll take it and I'll lift it up and let it roll off the corner. And you can see like the old cigarette smoke or just whatever. Or maybe uh, Mabel's uh, furniture polish that you're taking off there. Because I've seen this on turntables where in cleaning the house will wipe their furniture down with some sort of a furniture polish and go over the lid of a turntable or maybe some CB gear or something like that. And I gotta be honest with you, I've put furniture polish on my stuff before to give it that look for a while. Um, I like my stuff to look good. That being said, this is how it turned out without having to put anything else on top. Detailer, uh, vinyl dressing or um, anything. I mean, I don't really, I don't put on like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's it? Uh, armor all or anything like that? I like to use like magnolia sometimes just end dust furniture polish, but it looks really good a little bit of natural wear right there right there But the cabinet is in extremely good shape. This looks really good. The camera's picking out a lot of defects um, In person though, it looks great. It looks like it's been fully detailed. Okay, so I got it all back together 100% 
Didn't change the cord. I figured I'm just going to leave it that way. Retro. It's original. It's not hurting anything. All functions are good. So uh, let's see here. I'm on channel 20 because that's where I've tuned the unit. So we've got the unit tuned for maximum right there. There we go. That is maximum tune and maximum gain. And I just wanted to show you guys something here on sideband. I'm glad I have a lot of noise today. This is an unusual amount of noise on this radio. Okay, there's the unit off. On, off. And that's almost a 2S unit signal. Almost a 2S unit signal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to detune it and then turn the gain down. Um, I want to show you how important this can be in in DXing. I wish we had some DXing. I'm going to turn it on. We have maximum gain. I'm going to detune it. There is where it is with the unit off, pretty much, right? Almost about a two. So there's maximum detune on there. Now I'm going to turn the gain down. Now, why would I want to do this, Wagon Master? Well, I think this would be very nice. If you guys have a sideband radio that doesn't like bleed over, I'm thinking my TRC449 offhand. Um, and you're, we've got a bunch of people on the Super Bowl splattered all over the place. Your a &L's freaking out, but you need your a &L for the static. And what happens is some radios will get that uh, splatter from the AM boys or from an adjacent channel when you have your a and noise blinker in, and it really messes with your audio. It makes your audio sound bad. It kind of depends on what what the, the design of the radio is, but I've, I've had radios like, uh, I want to say like a JC Penny or something that flipped out, and it sounded terrible. So you get bleed over. You're trying to... Uh, tune in somebody on sideband and have a good clear signal uh, you can't do it however with this device in line detuned with the gain down now you can knock out and and actually attenuate uh, anything coming in from the sides and hopefully have a fighting chance of uh, having a, a clearer reception to that guy on sideband so let's turn the unit off and that's what it would normally be and that's with the unit on, but detuned. So I'm gonna turn the preamp back on. I'm gonna bring up the gain. And now I'm gonna tune it. Oh, let's turn it on. There we go, turn the unit on. That was backwards. And there it is, right there. Maximum gain, maximum tune. Perfect. You couldn't ask for anything better. You really couldn't. I think I think this is a great product. Now, for a modern radio, you know, uh, it's pretty nice. But like I was saying, on some of them older radios that don't like that uh, that splatter from those big stations on AM when your noise blanker and A&L is on, this may be the, uh, the answer for you to null some of that stuff out and uh, enjoy your radio a little bit more. And of course, we got the cool factor on the air light. Now I wanted to show you how this works. So on AM, I'm going to put the radio on AM and we just key down the on the air light that stays on until you unkey. Okay. On sideband, because this has like has a, a keying circuit and it's similar to uh, to an amplifier, to a linear, reverse preamp as a dirty diaper would call them. So what we're going to do is we're going to key it up. We're going to go hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. There, I was trying to get it. You want to chatter a little bit? Okay. Okay, so it works like a sideband uh, delay. However, I'm thinking um, that I'm going to uh, get into that other cap and add a little bit of sideband delay. And maybe, I don't like modding stuff like this, but I may put like an SSB, a little micro toggle switch in back here and um, uh, do that. Why would you do that? Well, I want to do that because I don't want to... Uh, thrash on that 45 year old relay and uh, a little bit of sideband delay is okay with me I like a little bit of sideband delay I like a little more than the average Joe uh, I'm used to it and um, 
Not a problem. Even for those quick key up guys. If I miss something, I can always say, huh. But anyway, um, I like, I think I'm going to add a little bit more delay to that. But as far as it goes right now, she's done. She's one and done. Little spot right there. That's funny because really I'm looking at it here uh, off camera and you can't see that. So she's in pretty good shape. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, smash that thumbs up button. I'd really, really appreciate it. And uh, once again, thank you, John, Mr. UDX38, sometimes known as World Radio 038. Thank you very much. I appreciate the donation to the shack. I will cherish this, cherish this for a long time, my friend. This is going on on the 2K up here somewhere.